எட்டை சென்று அசாவாமை வேண்டும் பெருமை முயற்சி தரும் தர்ஃபோர் வி ஷுட் ஹாவ் த ஹோப் தட் குட்னஸ் வில் ஹேப்பன் ஈவன் இன் த வார் சுச்சுவேஷன் இன் ஆர் வேர்ல்டு whenever we try we can achieve maximum today uh, jamal mohammed college celebrates national science day today it's apt to discuss more about science it is a interdisciplinary subject the talk is purely based on the following first we deal with chemical graph theory what is chemical graph theory then applications of chemical graph theory in particular applications of molecular descriptors again we study about molecular descriptors finally discussion is about current trends and updates in techniques which are used by mathematicians and chemist to compute molecular descriptors mathematical chemistry nowadays present a variety of approaches to understand the mathematical structure which lies behind existing chemical concept to establish the to establish and investigate novel mathematical models of chemical phenomena and applying mathematical ideas and techniques in chemistry throughout the entire history of chemistry certain scientists usually contemplate connection between mathematics and chemistry and the possibility of using mathematics for deducing and predicting new chemical facts extensive use of mathematical methods in traditional in various branches of physical chemistry especially in thermodynamics and chemical kinetics chemical graph theory is a branch of mathematical chemistry which deals with the non trivial applications of graph theory to solve molecular problems chemical graph theory applies this branch of mathematics to model molecules in order to study their various physical properties chemical graph serves as a convenient model for any real or abstracted chemical system it can represent different chemical objects as molecules reactions crystals polymers clusters and so on the common feature of chemical system is the presence of sites and connection between them sites may be atoms electrons molecules molecular fragments or groups of atoms intermediate orbitals and so on the connection between sites may represent bonds bonded and non bonded interactions elementary reaction steps and rearrangements the language of graph theory is different from that of chemistry chemical graph theory has various applications molecular descriptors have been used so far in the car- what is molecular descriptors molecular descriptors may be a boiling point a refractive index solubility calculation density or the de- thermodynamic properties like heat of formation and vaporization and the phi- biophysical properties bio concentration factor biological degradability salt sorption and physiological properties like toxicity studies have also been undertaken in which molecular descriptors have been employed in the characterization of molecular branching the prediction of the energy gap in polymeric species 
the determination of optimal positions of defect atoms in crystal lattices and the modeling of crystal growth processes the concept of molecular structure is one of the most important concepts in the development of the scientific knowledge of the 21st century as a matter of fact the reasoning based on the molecular structure has been the main engine for the great development of physical chemistry molecular physics organic chemistry quantum chemistry chemical synthesis polymer chemistry and medicinal chemistry the molecular descriptors has various applications in pharmacological physiochemical biological and toxicological <coughs> to analyze the what are the what is the applications of topological indices Uh, topological indices is nothing but molecular descriptors this is used to analyze the chemical properties of organ preliminary screening of drug molecules and it predicts biological activity of chemical compounds it also predicts binding energy of protein ligand complex at a preliminary stage you can see that this is 2 comma 2 comma 4 tri methyl betaine c8 hat you can see the molecule here molecular representation it is in 3d and this is the chemical formula this chemical formula can be extended to the chemical graph see every atom is represented as a vertex a b c d like this way we represent the four we represent the atom as vertex atom as vertex in a graphical way and the bond this is nothing but an edge the four here a b c d or these are the atoms and the connection a b this is like a bonding a b in graph theoretical terms we say that a b c are vertices and the edges are a b b c c d these are the edges here we deal with what is adjacency or vertex degrees or vast these things and all these are the preliminaries we'll see the preliminaries first you can see that as i said chemical graph is this is nothing but a structure here you can see that here let me draw the a structure chemical structure see these are atoms these are all atoms and there is a connection between them this is like a bond or in the graph theoretical term we'll say that these are an edges that just i will name name the atoms this is for the sake of calculation okay now first we deal with this is like this is like a chemical graph then this 1 2 3 4 these are like atoms and edge edge means already i said this is the chemical bond suppose the edge 1 2 edge 1 2 is nothing but a chemical form the edge 1 2 this is the edge 1 2 is a chemical bond then degree of a vertex degree of a vertex are in the chemical term we'll say that valency of an atom therefore you see that uh, how many therefore this is the vertex or atom this is connected with 2 3 and 4 therefore here we can say that the valency of an atom valency of an atom 
one is nothing but one this is nothing but it it is at it is at it is uh, related with the two three and four the valency of an atom is three likewise you can see suppose if you want to calculate the valency of an atom four what is the valency of an atom this is related with one and it is related with the three and it is related with the three therefore the valency of an atom that four is also three suppose what is the valency of an atom 5 the valency of an atom 5 it is related only with 4 therefore the, uh, the valency of an atom is 1 otherwise in the graph theoretical term in the graph theoretical term we say that this is like we say that it is a degree the for degree of vertex 1 is nothing but 3 degree of vertex 1 is 3 and degree of vertex 2 is see it is related with 1 and 3 therefore the degree of vertex 2 is 2 and degree of vertex 3 it is related with three elements three vertices therefore the degree is 3 and the already i said the degree of 4 is 3 and degree of 5 is 1 the next concept is nothing but a tree or it is like a acyclic structure now you can see that this is an acyclic structure there is no cycle what is the meaning of cycle cycle means suppose you may have the here itself you can see the cycle 1 2 3 4 is a cycle you can see that 1 2 and 3 4 is a cycle there are many uh, is there any other cycles there in this uh, in this chemical graph you can see that there are cycles what are the cycles 1 3 4 this is a cycle 1 3 4 is a cycle as well as 1 2 3 is also a cycle but in this structure there is no cycle this type of chemical graph is known as acyclic structure and there we have some chains as i already said cycle cycle is nothing but this is like a cycle the 1 2 3 4 again what it ends with a yeah, one therefore this is like a cycle then adjacency matrix we deal with adjacency matrix what is the meaning of adjacency matrix suppose now we deal with the sum of the uh, chemical graph let me draw therefore this is a chemical graph you can see that the uh, that uh, atoms you can name it as 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 7 now we have to identify the adjacency matrix adjacency matrix means suppose you can write this is like a matrix you can write what is the meaning of adjacency matrix now one is not related with the four one is not related with one therefore we can put it as zero now whether one is related with two yes it is related with two therefore we can put one whether one has the relation with three no therefore we can put it as zero for with four it is related and the 
therefore you can put one therefore if it is related or if it is adjacent then we can put one in the adjacency matrix therefore this is nothing but an adjacency matrix then one is not related with the five and it is not related with six and seven then we again we consider the second atom this is related with only one and three therefore you can put one and three you put one and all other things and all zero likewise for three three is related three is adjacent with two four and five therefore you can give two four and five all the other things and all you can name therefore this is not this is this is nothing but an adjacency matrix then we deal about molecular now we move to molecular descriptors what are the molecular descriptors this is the origin in 1947 vnr in vnr uh, for, for to find out the poiling point he identified vnr index then in 1971 ozaya index was found out by ozaya then in 1972 jackriff indeed indices were introduced in 1975 randic index is introduced it is nothing but a degree based indices okay these are the things already i said uh, therefore this is like a graph theory concept uh, g means it is a connected graph or molecular graph and vertex set vertex set means just now we have seen here this is a chemical graph here what is the vertex set 1 2 3 4 these are the vertex set and what are the edges suppose these are the edges you can say that e1 e2 e3 these are the edges set e4 e5 e6 e7 and e8 therefore the vertex set we consisting of the numbers 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and the edge set edge set is nothing but it starts from e1 e2 etc e7 then it is given the length of a shortest distance shortest path between u and v in g what is the shortest path the shortest path means see suppose you consider this uh, chemical graph suppose if you want to find the path between 1 and 5 path between the vertices or the atoms between 1 and 5 we have to calculate what are the path suppose if you can come from 1 to 2 you can go from 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 and 3 to 4 and again 4 to 5 this is one path this is one path and another path you can go this way also how you can go 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 and 3 to 5 this is one path and again another path is there this is 1 to 4 and 4 to 5 see here the distance is nothing but how many distance you have 1 1 2 3 and 4 therefore there here the distance distance between 1 and 5 is 
here the distance between 1 and 5 using this path suppose you consider this path as p1 and this is p2 and this is p3 the p1 path has the distance 4 the p2 path has the distance 3 and the p3 path has distance 1 comma 5 it has the distance 2 therefore among these three paths which is the shortest path P3 is the shortest path 1 to 4 and 4 to 5 this is the path this is the path this is the shortest path therefore this is the concept regarding shortest path. Then we will say the degree of u and degree of v just we can see that Here you can see the degree of what is the degree of 1? Degree of 1 is nothing but it is related with 2 and 4. It is adjacent with 2 and 4. Therefore, degree of 1 is equal to 2. Therefore, this is what degree. Therefore, just now we will we'll come to the molecular descriptor or a topological indices. This is a real number which characterizes the molecular graph. It may be distance based or degree based or it is a distance and degree based. Uh, here VNR index, his index, these are the distance based indices. Randic index and Jagraff index, these are the degree based indices. And Cutman and Sulz index, these are the distance as well as degree based indices. See, this is the formula for VNR index. VNR index is sum of D of u comma v. What is the meaning? You have to find the distance between every pair of vertices. Every pair of vertices, you have to identify the distance. How to identify the distance? Distance between 1 and 2, distance between 1 and 3, distance between 1 and 4. Likewise, you have to calculate. And after that, if you sum it up, then this is nothing but a VNR index. Then these are all the other, other types of indices. The vertex edge VNR, there are, there are hundreds of uh, molecular descriptors are there. Now in this talk, let me explain only about the famous VNR indices. Now you can see that, that atom board connectivity, here you can see that the sum of root of degree of u plus degree of v minus 2. Therefore, this calculates that this is the index based on degree. Some of the indices have been tabulated here. The Randic index is nothing but the sum of 1 by root of degree of u and degree of v. There are based, then we will move to the computations part. What is the computation part? This is the 2-methyl-butane. In the 2-methyl-butane, this, this is the distance matrix. You calculate 1 to 1, there is no distance. 1 to 2, two the distance is 1. And 1 to 3, the distance is nothing but 1 to 2, one, one distance and another distance. Therefore, we'll have 2. Likewise, 1 to 4, which the distance is 3. Therefore, what is the VNR index? We have to calculate the distance between 1 to 1, 1 to 2. Likewise, you have to calculate. Then after that, you have to sum it up everything. Therefore, the, I have calculated in a row wise. Then if you sum it up, it will give the VNR index. This is uh, by the direct method. For the direct method is useful when you have simple chemical graph. See that this is a chemical graph. For this chemical graph, you need uh, ma that manual calculation. It will take extra time. Then this is the Randic index. In this Randic index, the one molecular structure is given and this has been calculated. See the first one, this is degree of U into degree of E. So for the first molecule, it is a pink color, it is given as the degree 1 and 3. Likewise, if you calculate, if you use the formula, you can get the answer. In recent days, the standard cut method technique has been 
applied to compute easily. The cut method is a powerful tool. It is implemented by Glaser. The edge cut, edge cut is nothing but a convex cut. We say that if you uh, if you have the cut, if you make if you remove any edges from the uh, graph or from the molecular graph, it the comb the cut the graph will go into two components. These are the convex subgraphs. Convex subgraph means the in the same graph. This is the technique we use. Uh, this is a famous relation. This is theta relation. For any two edges, e is equal to x y, f is equal to u v. This is the condition. D of x comma u plus D of y comma v is not equal to D of x comma v plus D of y comma. V. You can consider this example. Suppose you consider this is the this is the graph. This is the edge cut is nothing but x y and u v. If you here you can see that uh, d of x comma u d of x comma u means the distance between x and distance from x to u. The distance is nothing but There's the distance d of x comma u is two, and d of y comma v. D of y comma v means it starts from here to there. This is the shortest this shortest path. The distance is two, and d of x to v we have to calculate x to v. What is x to v? Therefore, this is the path x to v. The distance is three, and d y to y to u we have to calculate y to u means one, two, and three. Therefore, the distance is three. The so totally four and this is six. This is not equal. Therefore, we can apply the cut method. After removing this cut, you can get this type of graphs H one and H two. Here, number of one more example. So for this is G. If you remove this cut, this is split it into two uh, components. Here, this is one type of cut. Likewise, we can give fixed cuts. Instead of here, instead of here, you can see that what is the first one? We can say that n one of f two. N one of f two means number of Uh, vertices or odd terms in the first component. In this component, in this component, we have five vertices. See, one, two, three, four, and five. Therefore, number of odd terms in the first component that is five. And again, you can see that uh, number of uh, that uh, edges in this component is four. And again, the in this uh, subgraph, we have nineteen atoms and twenty-six edges. We have the formula is nothing but for the convex using the convex cut. If you multiply number of uh, if you multiply number of vertices in both the graphs. Like we here, there are six cuts are there. For each cut, you have to cut, you have to uh, you have to find separately. And using this, you can calculate the value. See, there are six cuts are there. Six cuts are there. And uh, this type of uh, number of twelve uh, into twelve and three three times you can have. Uh, using the cuts, you can calculate in this way. For there are many uh, structures are there. For that, this is my I have done in PhD using these structures. There you can calculate. These are all complicated structures. Using this convex cut, we can calculate all type of um, the molecular descriptors. There are nano sheets are there. Carbon nano sheets. For this also, we can use this type of methods.
uh, one more uh, another technique is nothing but this is the strength weight Uh, this type of structures we cannot apply we can apply convex cut method but uh, this type of structures if you apply you can take more time to avoid the time that aurora and sandy clivers they have introduced a new uh, new technique please let me show by the slide show Is it visible? Is it visible? Current trends? I think it's it visible. Yes, ma'am, it's visible, ma'am. Ah, I see, sir. Therefore, for this type of structures, we apply another technique. See, this is a illustration. Suppose if you take a cut, so for E one, E one consisting of first edge, second edge, third and fourth. So for that E one, if you remove eight edges, so for E one consisting of these six edges, instead of the subgraph, after the removal, there are many graphs are there. Not only one graph, there are many graphs are there. Many segments of graphs are there. To calculate this technique, we we have we consider the graph, the whole graph as a vertex. And this graph as a vertex, then this, this is a vertex and again a vertex, okay. Then after that, we form the graph. We form the graph. And here, this is the vertex, uh, vertex weight and edge weight. In the first one, you can see that in the first one, how many vertices are there? See? Eight vertices are there. This is a vertex weight and the edges. How many edges are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Therefore, eight. Therefore, likewise, this is a vertex, single vertex. There are no edges. Therefore, one and zero. The same thing for one, zero. And this is same as the this structure. Therefore, we have. Then, this is, we say that this is like a quotient graph. Quotient, quotient graph after the removal E1. After the removal E1, this is the vertex weight. This is the weight. And here, this is nothing but how many, only one. You one only one vertex is there. Therefore, this is like SE1, strength edge. This is another edge cut. This is an illustration for another edge cut. See, this is the complicated one. Like, likewise, we can have the, this is like, this is another strength weighted graph. For the strength weighted graph, this is the definition to calculate the uh, VNR index. There are many more things are there. I think, let me stop with this one.
then the prabhu will continue the rest of the things these are all the references do you have any questions sir any is there any question otherwise prabhu will handle the all the you can you can ask him he will but he he needs a time from 11:45 to 12:30 so for let me leave thank you i once again i thank the principal head of the department especially dr prasanna who arranged this um, this webinar thank you thank you very much thank you ma'am for engaging us with your knowledgeable work thank you lord ma'am Hello, sir. We have reached the second session. First and foremost, in behalf of PG and the third department of mathematics, I would welcome Dr. S. Prabhu, Associate Professor of Mathematics, Rajashmi College, Rajashmi Engineering College, Chennai. Welcome you sir. Rich people would have many people behind them, but kind people have true people behind them. With a true person behind you, you could win a thousand people against you. The best example for this quote, we have honorable this old person, Dr. S. Prabhu sir, Associate Professor of Mathematics, Rajalakshmi Engineering College, Chennai. Sirs here to take a special lecture on challenges in computation of molecular description. So please take over the platform and the platform is yours. Please sir. Thank you. Thank you, Prasanna. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Your audio is being muted, sir. No, I am coming in the other device. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is my screen visible? No, sir. One second. now yes sir now it's visible sir Okay, I, I formally thank uh, the organizer, principal of uh, Jamal Muhammad College, Trichy, and the head of the department of mathematics, and uh, sending the students of uh, chemistry, as well as uh, head of the department of chemistry, and the organizer, uh, Prasanna. So, sister, I'm just uh, going to continue with the uh, sister's uh, content, and sister made a presentation with the molecular descriptors and molecular descriptors computations with various techniques and of course whenever we introduce something there will be always a limitation so i am going to just elaborate the limitations where the cut technique and the extended cut technique can be applied that is why my title goes like challenges in computation of molecular descriptors that is wherever you find a difficulty in computing the molecular descriptor with the existing technique that is what i am going to highlight 
and uh, people who are interested in uh, taking up the challenges and solving the challenges and those who are uh, interested in uh, adding colors to the literature with their uh, new findings are most welcome okay what is chemical graph theory so let me just quickly go through the basic contents whatever the uh, sister has already delivered and along with that we'll just uh, move on to the uh, computational complexity of the particular above said molecular descriptor what is chemical graph theory so chemical graph theory is an interdisciplinary field where the atomic structure of a chemical structure is modeled as a graph it applies graph theory to chemistry and focuses on the idea of chemical graph otherwise called a molecular graph wherein vertices and edges denoted as atoms and bonds example i have taken a coronin structure it containing a seven benzene rings fused one with the other with a molecular graph where they are called vertex or atoms and the connection between two atoms are called bonds or edges what is qsr quantitative structure activity relationship what is, what is that it is a mathematical relationship between biological activity of a molecular system and its geometrical and chemical characteristics a general formula for qsar relationship is activity is equal to a function of molecular properties qsar attempts to find the consistent relationship between biological activity and the molecular properties so that these rules can be used to evaluate the activity of new compound molecular structure every every chemical compound will have definitely a molecular structure once the molecular structure of a chemical compound is identified what are the component we can just study on the molecular structure or investigate on the molecular structure there is a separate field called molecular physics where how the molecular atoms or bonds are moving or having some interaction with one and the other is discussed with respect to the field called molecular physics likewise there are several activities you can just talk about molecular structure i have just listed few of them molar volume connectivity indices charge distributions bio transformations solubility activity activity when i say both the with respect to atoms and bonds toxicity and pharmacokinetics molecular descriptors these molecular descriptors play a fundamental role in chemistry pharmaceutical science environmental protection policy and health research as well in the quality control being the way molecules thought of as real bodies are transformed into numbers allowing some mathematical treatment of the chemical information contained in the molecule according to roberto the molecular descriptors is a final result of a logical and mathematical procedure which transforms chemical information encoded within a symbolic representation of a molecule into a useful number or the result of some standardized experiment descriptors fall into four classes topological descriptors geometrical descriptors electronic descriptors and hybrid or 3d descriptors topological indices were first introduced by hall wiener it is basically transforming a molecular graph into a number the concept of topological indices came from the work done by hall wiener in 1947 while he was working on the steaming limit of paraffin he observed that there is a high degree of correlation between the steaming limit and wiener index suppose i just put this question for a chemist suppose if you wanted to find the boiling point of certain chemical what do you do you just to take normally to the lab and do some process and find the boiling point by doing this what do you get first thing you will just spend some energy and you will just get 
some hazards in from the laboratory when you do an experiment okay so being a mathematician what we suggest is we just to do some mathematical calculation we find some value for the particular compound using the chemical graph theory and we also prove that there is a high degree of correlation between the value what we get using mathematics with the, the value what you get with the laboratory calculation so when i prove that there is a high degree of correlation and i can very well say that don't go to laboratory first admit my result with respect to mathematics and later you can move on to chemical chemical procedures so by just doing this type of research you can just reduce enormous number of laboratory experiments which just indirectly pollute the environment so that is what the idea behind here and the same thing same uh, research getting boosted with respect to molecular crystal tar so when i do mathematical procedure i don't uh, pollute the environment without polluting the environment i am able to get or i am able to give some value or the most correlated value for every compound in terms of its boiling point or other physical features so that is why this particular content has a very good impact and appreciation in the field of research see wiener has given the parameters like this the boiling point will be equal to a into w plus b into w b plus c with respect to some set of constants a b c for a given isomeric group and where w rep represents the path number that is wiener number and w p represents the polarity number and they are just given like this what is w path number which is the sum of a distance between every pair of vertices of the graph g whereas here the graph is treated as a molecular graph and wp you have a set of all or ordered pairs or number of ordered pairs which gives the path number as 3 that is what your wp so when you find your w and wp along with the constants a b c you can able to predict your boiling point so what i do manually i just take a graph uh, take a molecule convert as a molecular graph and find w and wp take three constants and just to put it in the formula i get a value and that value i can call it as a boiling point instead of going to the laboratory i can very well find the boiling point application of topological analysis to drug discovery so here in drug discovery these contents are uh, mandatory in discovering the drug one is chemical info chem informatics basic properties like uh, as i said earlier boiling point molar properties etc and of course all these things once you know you can just put under the qsa or ksp study and finally it will go to the pharma industry in order to discover the drug various types of topological indices there are four major types of topological indices first one distance based indices the winner will come under distance based indices and degree based indices will be a first diagram second diagram and all other degree based indices which is sister has already discussed and degree distance based indices it is going to be a blend of degree as well as distance and bond add bond additive based indices now the computational challenges so before getting into the computational challenges we just uh, look into the computational technique what is available in the literature manual computation of topological indices turns out to be tedious for large molecular frameworks which in turn paved the way for the evaluation of new techniques and the computation of topological indices sister has gave some example with very few number of vertices and edges and i am going to deal with a large number of vertices and edges the cut method the first in 1874 Arthur Cayley were introduced chemical graphs. He first took a molecule and from that molecule he derived a graph and with that uh, depiction Arthur Cayley introduced a chemical graph theory with its own example in 1874. 
Then later, in 1971, Graham Pollack introduced another concept called the partial cube, nowhere related to chemical graph theory. It's a pure graph theory or interconnection network, we would say. And with that, partial cubes, the theory extended along with this partial cube content with the Cayley's chemical graphs. The theory started extended from 1971. In 1973, Jokovic gave a relation for this partial cube with respect to any two edges A, B, and C, D. The distance between A, C plus distance between B, D will not be equal to distance between A, D and distance between B, C. So, if you are uh, taking two edges A, B, C, D, satisfying this Jokovic relation, you can call that as the convex party. Convex uh, cut or the removal of the, those two edges will result a convex cut. And later, 1984, Winkler characterized another relation called the theta star relation. And then 1995, class approved that the benzenoid system is the partial cube. See, the Pollack introduced a partial cube. Jacobi gave a relation for that. And Winkler extended that relation. And together with all these contents, Sandy proved, with the help of all these contents, Sandy proved, Sandy class proved that the entire benzenide system is a partial cube. What is benzenide system? It's a system consigning the benzene rings. The one which I introduced in the earlier, the first few slides, one or two slides, with a chlorinine molecule is a complete benzenide system. Likewise, there are plenty of benzenide systems, or you can say polycyclic aromatic compounds. All of them are going to give you the benzene-based structure, which are naturally partial cubes. So whenever I say it's a partial cube, I can very well extend the technique of a Sandy class. So whenever there is uh, no partial cube available in the molecular system, we have to extend our content to Aragraj technique that is called the quotient graph technique, which is also discussed by a system. So here in 2015, in 1995, Sandy just put a partition technique with only two components, and the two component is extended by Arakraj et al. with the mini components in 2015. So both were introduced by cut technique. Sandy introduced a cut with the only two components, and Arakraj et al. gave a cut with the mini component. So whenever you have many components, each component will be treated as a single vertex, and therefore you get multi components in the cut, which results a Quotient graph. So, for all these, the basic contents are going to be a bipedal graph. A bipedal graph KMN has a vertex set partition into two subsets with order MN in such that no two vertices are adjacent within the same subset. Here you are given with a graph containing eight vertices with certain edges, and I have just put a partition with uh, pink vertices and yellow vertices, and the two form a uh, two sets. And all edges are between one partition to the other. And there is a famous theorem called a graph is bipartite if only if it has no R cycle. So from this, you can able to understand all your uh, benzenoid system will be having even cycles and there will not be odd cycle. So you can very well say the benzenoid system is bipartite. So whenever the graph is bipartite, you can very well admit the sandy cut. That is the simple uh, cut which uh, gives the component to two. So what happens if you have a graph which is not bipartite? In that case, your single cut will not be helpful. In that case, you will have to use a multiple cut which results a multiple component. And all those components along with the edges, you can always create a quotient graph. With that, RX technique will help you in computing the Take computing the molecular descriptor. Types of subgraphs. A subgraph H of a graph G is another graph constructed from a pair V of H subset of V of G and E of H subset of E of G. Then, of course, induced subgraph. You might have studied in your graph theory and convex subgraph. The convex subgraph is a very important content in establishing the Sandy technique as well as the Arakraj technique. If all shatters to be path between any two vertices of H, the subgraph H, lie totally in H, 
at some point the subgraph h of uh, g is supposed to be convex which means what you take a graph g take a subgraph h check whether all path between all shortest path between the pair of vertices of h is same as the pair of vertices in g types of subgraphs consider the graph g and the left one subgraph h is an example of normal subgraph and second one induced subgraph and the third one is convex subgraph when you see the convex subgraph you have what is v1 v2 v3 along with e2 and e4 if you take any pair of vertices of the convex subgraph the path joining the pair of vertices will be same in g so therefore you can say any path for example v1 to v2 v2 to v3 and v2 to v4 so all these are as same in the graph g therefore you can call this as a convex subgraph distance between two vertices so how do i define a distance between two vertices that our uh, sister has already given i am just just revising you take a graph g and take two vertices u v there are two possibilities in reaching from u to v the first one the shortest path between u and v along with the edges 2 and there is another path to the three edges the distance between them is 3 so when i compare these two the minimum distance is 2 therefore the shortest path between u and v is going to be the blue layered path and not the red layered so this is how i define a distance between two vertices when i say distance it always represents the shortest distance not the longest distance a distance between vertex to an edge the distance between a vertex u and an edge f is equal to xy defined as the distance between u comma f is equal to minimum of distance between u to x and distance between u to y where u and the where x and y are vertices connecting edge f look at here the same graph i just consider the vertex u and the edge xy now the distance between u and f is going to be explained here first u to y the distance is 1 and u to x the distance is 2 i need to take a minimum among these two therefore the distance between u to edge f will be minimum of 1 comma 2 which is 1 therefore the distance between u and f is 1 this is between two edges so here i just take two edges e is equal to uv and f is equal to xy the distance between e comma f the two edge denoted by capital d is explained like minimum of distance between u to f and v to f look at here the first edge e connecting uv and the second edge f connecting xy the distance between u and y are u and f you can say it's 2 and v and f it's 1 therefore the distance between e and f is minimum of 2 comma 1 which is equal to 1 convex cut just consider the graph now i am going to just introduce a cut which is the removal of some edges from the original g so e2 and e8 are the edges which when i just remove i just take two component these two components are convex subgraphs because if you take any two vertices and find the path and that wholly lies in the g1 or g2 take any two vertices of g1 find a path shortest path that is wholly lies in g1 similarly for g2 therefore you can say this g1 g2 are convex subgraphs of the original graph g and the cut e2 e8 the cut set e2 e8 is called convex cut we call it as convex cut and of course this convex cut gives the component as only two component therefore it is sandys cut and next one which is not convex it's an example of a non convex cut e2 e4 e7 when you remove it is going to give a another graph with the two component the first one v1 and v2 and the remaining thing v3 v4 
4, V5, V6, V7. So here, why it is not convex is in the second graph, if you consider V5 to V3, V5 to V3, the shortest path between V5 to V3 will be V5, V6, V3. But there is another shortest path from V5, V2, V3 that goes to G1 and then comes back to G2. Yes. Is it right? The shortest path between V5 and V3 will be V5, V6, V3. And that wholly lies in G2. But there is another shortest path from V5 to V3 via V2 that goes to V1 and comes back to G2. Starts from G2, goes to V1 and comes back to G2. This should not be the case of convex cut or convex uh, component. Therefore, this cut cannot be considered as a convex cut. Partial cubes. A subgraph H of a G is an isometric if every pair of vertices, the distance between them in both the graph G and H are equal. Example, consider G, consider H1 and H2. I can say that H1 and H2 are called isometric subgraph of G because any two vertices, if you take from H1 and H2, the distance or the path, shortest path joining them will be lying wholly in H1, wholly in H2. And the same thing will happen in G also. So I can call the G as a subgraph. Likewise, any subgraph, if you take, it will be of isometric subgraph. Therefore, the G is your passing through. And these are the terminologies which we used in computing the various topological indices using the strength weight graph. And edge E is equal to U, V belongs to E of G. Any, that is capital N E U of E is going to be the set of all vertices which are closer to U than to V. That is what your set. And similarly, the number of elements in that uh, capital N is denoted by N U. Similarly, for an edge E, the capital M U is going to be set of all edges closer to U than to V. And the number of elements in capital M U is denoted by small M U. And here, with an illustration, you can able to understand. I take edge E is equal to U V. And N U, that is the set of all vertices closer to U than to V are going to be A, U, C, and E. Similarly, for edges, you will get U A, U C, A E, C E. They are the edges which are closer to U than V. Jacobic relation. Consider the graph. I am going to just explain the same Jacobic relation with this graph with the vertices x, mn, xy, mn, kl. Consider the two edges, e and f. And I am going to verify whether this edge e and f satisfy this relation. Once it's getting satisfied, I can remove these two edges, e and f and make the comp graph into two components, which are convex subgraph. Let us first check the same graph. What is the relation? E and F are related only when the distance between KM plus distance between LN should not be equal to distance between KN and distance between LM. So what is your KM distance? Is 2. LN distance is again 2. So 2 plus 2 is 4. And the KN distance is 3. And LM distance is another 3. Therefore, 2 plus 2 is not equal to 3 plus 3. Therefore, these two edges E and F satisfies the jacobic winkler relation. Therefore, you can very well cut this, that is remove this E and F in order to make the graph into two components. Both of them are convex subgraphs of the graph G. So if you do this process, you can able to get your Wiener index by the following illustration. Of course, the convex partition I just illustrated in the earlier slide, and I'm going to compute now using the technique. The graph with A, B, C, D, E, F, and of course, A, F, and C, D, that is Z and W are the edges can be removed because it already satisfied the Jacobic-Winkler relation. When I remove, 
I just get two component G1 and G2. The number of vertices and number of edges in the G1 are going to be three comma two, and similarly for G2 is three comma two. Therefore, for the cut E1, which is horizontal edges, the number of edges removed is two, and the number of vertices is three in the first component. Number of vertices in the second component is also three. Therefore, I can just compute my Wiener index using this component. Why I multiply by three is I just get another cut, say U and X and B and Y all are similar. So if I remove B and Y, it is going to act as similar. You will be getting another two component. The component cardinalities are going to be the same. The number of vertices, number of edges are going to be the same in each component. Similarly, obtuse cut. That is another one. U edge and X edge. See the uh, Z W edge when you remove, you get a component G1 and G2. The same thing is going to happen when you remove B Y and U X. So what I can do? All these uh, three removals, that is three cut sets, are going to behave like uh, uniform or symmetry. You just take one component and then multiply by three. So the number of vertices with the first component is three, and the number of vertices with the second component is also three. And three into three, nine. And this I am going to compute for three times. So I count it for three, which is three into nine, which is twenty-seven. Please note down this twenty-seven because the same graph, the Wiener index is going to be computed with a different technique, which is not uh, used by the cut method. And I am going to justify. I am going to use another method apart from this cut method, and but getting the same twenty-seven. But what happens if the cut method is not available you will have to go by the regular ancient technique called matrix method which is sister explained so take your d is a distance matrix and of course i find the distance between various pairs and i find the row sums and i find the row sum and i find all row value which is 54 i have to divide by 2 because i am going to repeat the value a b and b c are counted twice Therefore, when I divide by two, I get twenty-seven. This is by actual matrix method, which is very difficult when you have huge number of vertices and edges. Therefore, we drop by going by the matrix method. But whenever you have a large number of vertices with large number of edges, satisfying partial cube relation, Jacobi-Winkler relation, can be computed using the cut method, Sandys cut method. Of course, if the Sandys cut method doesn't helps you. Our class extended cut method will help you. That is, quotient uh, graph technique will help you. See the star cut. This is what the our class uh, et al's uh, cut method. The graph G. Look at this graph. So here, sandy cut also will be possible, and there are some cases where sandy cut will not be possible. For example, if we just consider the middle benzenes of the horizontal. You get a two degree vertices, and those cuts cannot be computed using a normal cut. So for which you just take a cut, which is go which goes in the zigzag direction. So how many edges removed from the graph to this kind of graph? There are two, four, six, eight edges removed. The removal of these eight edges results your graph into one, two, three, four, five, six components, in which left component and right component are isomorphic. And the middle component will give you a single vertex with no edges. So the quotient graph for this is going to be like this: the left and right vertex with u one i, v one i, and u two i, v two i will be of left component and right component, and the middle one are going to be the isolated vertices. So that I depicted as one comma zero, which represents one vertex zero edge, and that happens for all the cases. And the left and right, you have u one i, v one i, representing the number of vertices and number of edges in the left component, and u two i, v two i, representing the number of vertices and edges in the right component, respectively. So, using this quotient graph, I am just doing a computation. With the help of that, I am able to get the the above said topological indices, that is, molecular descriptors, for this particular graph. By just going uh, by Matrix method, it will be tedious because it contains large number of vertices. 
even the matrix method will be done only with this one Kekulian system because this Kekulian system will contain less than 100 number of vertices and less than 100 number of pages. Of course, you can just validate your results using the ancient matrix method. But what happens if you are constructing this Kekulian system, constructing a huge Kekulian system by just considering this single Kekulian system as a base molecule. For example, you have various other techniques. You can just take uh, the example I'll give a little later. See here, the vertical zigzag cut will give you this component. Similarly, you have another horizontal zigzag cut and obtuse zigzag cut. The first three are going to give you the quotient graph, which I have explained earlier, the diamond shaped quotient graph for the first three components. And for the second thing is the sandy circular cut. So when you remove your four edges, it gives the graph into two component. So two component means it is going to be the earlier cut technique, not the Arikrajital quotient technique. So for this, you will have your quotient graph as an edge itself. Left component, right component are the only components. Similarly, top component, right component are the only components. Again, up to cut, you have components. So apart from these six possibilities, there cannot be any other possibility of cuts, which means what? Uh, by just summing all these cuts, you will be able to get the ed total edge set of the Kekulin system. You can One can just check, validate the original graph G along with all these cut sets. So all your uh, zigzag cut along with your acute, obtuse, and horizontal cut, you will be able to get all edges of your G. Remember, when you do your cut, you must be able to cover all your edges of the graph G in any one of the partition or any one of the cut. So here it uh, turns out to be all edges coming under any one of the cut. Now look at the graph. This graph is constructed with the base molecule as the equivalent system, hexagonal equivalent system. This hexagonal equivalent system containing more than 100 number of vertices. So in this case, your matrix method will is going to be a deliberate failure. Right? So matrix method, if you wanted to consider, you will have to consider to more than 100 vertices. So it is going to be more than 100 cross 100 matrix for which the distance matrix cannot be found. Of course, there are some softwares available for which if you just draw these graphs with only finite number of vertices, you can able to get but that too will take some time, but that will give you an answer. But when you increase the number of vertices from that level to the higher level, that software also will give a failure. So therefore, we have to adopt another technique and that technique was proposed by Arik Rajita. So here uh, you have a quotient graph with a various zigzag cut. You will be getting variables in the UI, U1i and V1i, U2i and V2i. With respect to the variable, if I use MATLAB, I am able to get the computation. So these are the topological indices using cut technique. And of course, the next is whenever I get whenever I get the graph which is not biparted, graph which is not see here, the earlier graph, this is biparted, right? Though you have constructed a large uh, large graph, large molecular graph. With the Kekulian system, my graph stands in the biparted condition. So since it is biparted, I am able to get what? I am able to get the Sandy self and Aragrajetal's technique. What happens if my graph is not biparted? Look at the graph. Here, there is some uh, molecular graph of some medicine is given. Right nowhere. Right nowhere is a component. Uh, which is used in uh, COVID treatment. Here, there are benzene rings, there are pentagons, there are penten vertices, there are some edges. So all those edges can be cut using some basic cuts. Eh? But uh, the pentagons, the pentagons cannot be partitioned eh, using Sandy's cut or the Arakrajital's cut. So in that case, what I do? I just divide or I just partition the pentagon into five components. Each of them are going to be isolated vertices. So the cut is going to be entirely different from the earlier cuts. 
S1 and S2. You can just see S1 and S2. In this S1 and S2, you cannot uh, do one cut and leave out all the four edges, four cuts. So it is going to be the cut which cuts all edges at the same time, at a stretch. So when I do that, all five edges will be disappeared and you will be end up with a only five vertices. And when you started drawing the quotient graph, you result with again the pentagon graph. So whenever you just divide the pentagon or the do the cut technique with the pentagon, your quotient graph results again the pentagon. Therefore, there will not be any impact of your uh, cut technique over this pentagon. There is no other go. You will have to do the manual computation. That is what I am trying to explain here. So here only one or two pentagons available. Therefore, you are able to get uh, two cuts. For these two cuts, you can do manual uh, manual computation for this pentagon where the other cuts are uh, simple. Therefore, you can able to get the answer for this particular G4 right now. What happens if your uh, graph is large? Look at the next content. Here, there is one system given. The source is also given. It's journal Carbon, latest, uh, journal, latest article published in 2020. Here, they have constructed a molecular graph with only pentagons called unrelaxed pentagonal nanoribbons. So here, if you take any cycle that is of five size, which means what? There is no cycle of even number, which means what? You cannot apply the Sandy technique or the Arakrajital technique. Whereas what has to be used? You have to find another technique in computing this kind of uh, all those uh, proposed topological indices for this kind of new graphs, pentagonal nano ribbons. Similarly, next, uh, for which uh, there is no cut technique available. So you cannot define your Wiener index or any index, any distance based index. And of course, degree based index you can find out, but there is no relationship between degree based index and distance based index in the literature. Therefore, the degree based index will not help you in computing the distance based indices. So you will have to adopt another technique or new technique in evaluating this kind of structures. Another one, transition metal. So here there are three cycles, there are four cycles, there are six cycles. Four cycles you can consider as uh, cut, but you cannot cut all edges using the same cut because only four cycle edges will be covered. The three cycle edges will not be covered. Therefore, again, you will get a failure for this case using the existing technique. Next is Buckminster Fuller Ends. And this kind of Fuller Ends also will contain six cycles and five cycles, pentagons and hexagons, for which the cut technique cannot be used. You need to refer another one. But unfortunately, all these graphs are uh, some sort of a transitivity will be there, which means what? One atom, if you take, it is of a three regular. Any atom, if you take, it will be three regular. So, which means what? One atom, if you find some answer, and that's going to be repeated for all other atoms by structural property. So, that uh, technique we are going to adopt. Look at this method. Wiener index by another method, generalized Wiener polarity method. So, in the beginning, I explained boiling point with the help of Wiener index and Wiener polarity index, right? What is Wiener polarity index? It is a sum set of all or number of ordered pairs such that the distance between them is three. When I start extending that uh, Wiener polarity index to the generalized version, it is going to be WK of G, that is number of ordered pair of vertices with the distance K. Look at here, WK of G is equal to set of all ordered pair such that the pair induces the shortest distance as K. So if I just partition the vertex set into WK, where K ranges from 1 to diameter, I am able to get my Wiener index with the new way, not with the existing technique of Sandy or the Arak Rajital. So now here, Wiener index of G is sum of distance between U and V, where U and V taken with every pair of vertices, right? So in that case, the same Wiener index can be computed 
with the sum of k into wk of g what is wk of g it is going to give you the number of uh, ordered pair at distance k so when i just count in the different way i just take all pair and find the distance sum them that is going to be the earlier method now what i do is i just take all pair categorize the pair into the distance collect all one distance pair together collect all two distance pair together collect all three distance pair together and when i just find the number of pair in each basket i will multiply the basket with the number of uh, cardinality and along with that when i sum them i get a winner index which is going to be another way of computing the winner index not by just adding the pair distance first finding the distance between every pair and segregating the pair and then finding the sum not by actual sum so you are doing some extra work what is that segregating the pair you are just categorizing the pair of vertices with respect to its distance one distance pair separately two distance pair separately three distance pair separately and finally going with the diameter distance pair and obviously when you do diameter distance pair all pair will be coming under 1 to the diameter so that is what this method we are uh, propose another method it is already there in the literature this method will help you in computing the wiener index for the cases of failure look at here i am going to illustrate with the same cycle which have which we have already illustrated using the cut technique what was the answer can you remember the wiener index of this graph with respect to the cut technique i told you to remember right anybody okay let us go compute and finally you can just justify the say this answer will be correlating with the earlier answer you consider the graph a b c d e f w1 what is w1 act according to our definition w1 is a set of all pair of vertices at distance 1 so at distance 1 means obviously edges so what is ab ab is an edge which means ab is a pair of distance 1 similarly ac bd ce ef and df so how many pairs you have there are six pairs at one distance similarly two distance pair what are the two distance pair available here ad ae bc cf and de so these are the only two distance pair if at all if you think of any other pair it is going to be the repetition so there are six pair of vertices which gives two distance and there are three distances how many three distances pair you have three af be and cd so totally how many choice you will have how many choices you will have there are six vertices how many pairs of vertices pairs you will have six c2 six choose two which is 6 into 5 by 1 into 2 Six into by thirty, thirty by two, fifteen. There are fifteen pairs you will have. I have taken all pairs into account. Six plus six, twelve plus three, fifteen. So out of these fifteen pairs, some of them are one distance pair, some of them are two distance pair, some of them are three distance pair. So there are six pairs are at one distance, six pair are at two distance, three pair at three distance. So when I wanted to sum, I need to put a summation like this. k ranges from 1 to diameter here the diameter is 3 therefore k into wk 1 into 1 distance pair 2 into 2 distance pair 3 into 3 distance pair which results my 27 the same 27 we adopted by actual matrix method and by sandy's cut method so this is another method called generalized wiener polarity method here the idea behind are the content helped us in computing the 27 is the vertex transitivity so whenever i get a graph of this vertex transitivity i will be able to easily get the answer because one computation will be helpful in computing all other vertices because whatever i just discussed for a the same thing will be discussed for b c d e f etc so that is the logic here for the case of cycle 
similarly there are other indices where the the sandy technique or the arikara et al technique will not be used and they are actually the distance based topological indices called hyper wiener index so hyper wiener index is denoted by ww of g which is equal to 1 by 2 sum of uv belongs to v of g distance between uv into distance between uv plus 1 so this type of distance can be computed by the matrix method or by the actual uh, path collection method but the cut technique will never help you in computing this wiener index therefore we adopt this generalized wiener polarity index that is equivalent to 1 by 2 summation over k from 1 to d k into k plus 1 into wk of g so this generalized wiener polarity number or the method will help you in computing the hyper wiener index whenever you get a failure with the sandy uh, cut method or arik raj extended cut method and similarly here recursive circle and graph and this graph contains all cycles where you cannot apply your sandy cut method because it is not a partial cube and second thing this graph is a vertex transitivity graph whenever you find a vertex for which this particular transmission is obtained or the one vertex to the all other vertices distance sum is computed for one and you have done it suppose if you are uh, finding for the vertex one the distance between one to all other vertices and if you have a sum and if you consider that sum as a weight of the vertex one and the same weight is going to be repeated for 2 3 4 5 6 etc up to 15 and you can very well multiply by 16 because there are 16 vertices here so one time you compute multiply by 16 that is going to give you the wiener index or hyper wiener index so whenever you get a graphs of this kind you can very well apply your generalized wiener polarity method in computing the above set indices as well as your wiener index and the hyper wiener index so likewise there are plenty of other uh, graphs in the literature where you can very well find out the uh, above set topological indices whenever you get a failure with the existing literature techniques thank you if you have any difficulty or doubt you can uh, raise now students if you have any doubt you can raise now any questions no doubt sir thank you sir thank you for the opportunity given thank you sir for engaging us with your knowledgeable words that is always always and always something to be thankful for that's no end without the precious word thank you so now i invite hasan malik of third bsc mathematics to deliver vote of thanks please friend so we have to reach the end of the beautiful session first of all i would like to thank almighty god for making today session a great success on behalf of pg and research department of mathematics i would like to extend my heartiest thanks to our honorable chief guest dr sister s kulandi therese assistant professor of mathematics and a deputy principal chennai college tutukudi for her presence in this session thank you ma'am for enlightening us with your inspiring and motivating words and we have a lot to learn from you ma'am and dr s prabhu associate professor of mathematics rajalakshmi engineering college chennai for his presence in this session thank you sir for enlightening us with your inspiring and motivating words and we have a lot to learn from you sir whole heartedly i must thank our resolute sir for his support and guidance for organizing such an event thank you sir for assisting and encouraging all of us and i must thank dr a prasanna sir assistant professor of mathematics and i thank dr yam mohammed altaf sir assistant professor of mathematics for coordinating and making this event a great success and finally thank 
students for your kind cooperation once again i thank you all thank you thank you friend thank you sir thank you for the opportunity thank you sir I can leave now.